going to read The Cabin, which was a read-along book that I wrote and produced the music for. And give me just a second to arrange my screen here. For a walk in the woods on a cool evening, the air felt like a gate, a passage to better times and feelings. For now, in this time, I was free from the weight and felt like I was walking through a phantasm. The phantasm, though, was from a clarity of vision that was unprecedented in my experience. I could easily see things that pulled me towards petty thoughts and the more troubling anxiety of our modern times. I could read those that were advocates and overlook those that tried to hinder my mind. The wood told experiences and memories of those that had passed before me and it acted as a shield against electronic waves and digital signals. The trees had a new kind of life. I could see colors and shapes that had remained previously hidden disguised by modern living. The trees spoke to me, though I cannot repeat what was said in our languages. There was something radiating from everywhere around me, from the sparse blades of grass that grew despite the speckled shadows of the trees, the rocks, weeds, and the sear from last year's great winter. I realized that I was radiating too. I no longer understood my selfness. We were beings radiating in unison. There was a small cabin in the woods. It was modest and had no wires or pipes connecting it to the world. It had three windows and a door, and there were three large blackbirds perched on the roof. It was the end of the path, the destination. Inside the cabin was the conscious world. All of it was still in unison. There were no subjects or objects. It was an entire entirety of understanding. There was no concept of time until I started feeling a separation from my surroundings, a subject amongst objects. I was outside the cabin and the door was closed. I've spent my days since looking for this cabin. I've seen it from a distance a few other times, but whenever I get close enough to really see the cabin with three windows, one door, and three blackbirds perched on the roof, it, appear, it disappears only if, as if only a figment of my yearning. I still search, though. I carry the experience of the cabin with me forever. All right, so we just want to get the little end of that soundtrack in there. Um, I'm happy to take questions. If you have questions about this, I'll, I'll do a little introduction about the book. I, um, when I was a kid, had a portable record player that I really loved taking around. And my parents bought me Gremlins read-along books that I would listen to and I had the book. This book is modeled exactly like that and it had a record in it. This book comes with the record as well. Um, and I would um, listen to the records and they were like totally terrifying. 
scary. Uh, and I would, I would listen to them, but I, yeah, I was scared of them. They were kind of scary. The movie was scary to me when I was a child. Um, but there was just something about it that I kept wanting to do it. Like I really liked the fact that the, that I had an emotive response to it, I think. Um, the book is uh, composed of sort of digital illustrations that I've worked on over time and pulled stuff from paintings and drawings that I have. And then uh, one of my favorite parts to work on with this was the, the audio soundtrack. Um, so I did recorded my voice, but then also composed the, the, the soundtrack for it. Um, and I worked with Haunted Birthday Records in Atlanta, Georgia. So they recorded the, the record on seven inch plexiglass. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a square record, which is interesting. It's not like exactly like the Gremlins read along books that I had then, but, um, but I think that the square record is pretty awesome too, because it, it reminds me of like records that used to be printed in magazines and things like that, that were kind of inexpensive paper records. So yeah, that's a little bit about, um, where this project came from and yeah, I can, I have, uh, copies available. It's an uh, edition of 50. The book itself was printed here at Christian Edwards Printing in Des Moines. Um, so, yeah, it was a really great project to work on. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them if you want to type them in the chat. When did you start finish the project? Did it go as you thought? Um, it took quite a bit longer than I thought it would. The, um, I started the project in 20, early 2019, um, but it was, <clears throat> so I, I received uh, uh, something at Drake called the Center for, uh, Human Center for Humanities Research Scholar Award um, that started me on the path to sort of recording the book. I. Um, and that's a three-year award, so you get um, sort of research assistance with that award. So it, I really technically kind of started it in um, 2017, started doing the research for it and things like that, and then actually made the physical project, had, the, had a good idea of what I wanted to do in 2019, the start of 2019, and then it everything was printed and the record was uh, published in uh, fall of 2019. So it's been a little while since I've had it. Any other questions I can answer? Hmm. Type my um, in camp site here in the chat too, because uh, you can order the the book and record through that if you'd like to, um, or you can just contact me directly to uh, via Gmail or any email address you have for me. I have about a hundred email addresses, and I'd be happy to ship one to you. So if you're interested, all right. Thank you so much all for your time. I might just unmute everybody real quick. So we can just say goodbye. Feels nice to say bye in person. Thank you, Ben. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. I want to see the book in person. I don't think I ever have the. Cool. Um, it doesn't do it justice, obviously, through video, like the picture you have of the book. So I'll have to order myself a copy. I'll be contacting you directly. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. It's really great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Ben. Yep. Have a good night.